This is the Stella barrel system. And it's dissimilar to many other barrel systems because it's fitted in the front and the back. And I sat down with Simon Stevens of Inception Designs and we talked about this entire kit. And I hope when you're done watching this video, you're gonna go out and buy one. Danger Man here with Simon Stevens. He is the actual engineer of my axe, which I've owned for many, many years. I've gone on ad nauseum to many of you who've looked for purchase axes. This is the man, and now he's out on his own with Inception Designs. And many of you have been talking in many of the forums and other such places about the Stella barrel system. So Simon's going to tell us all about it so that you can end a number of your arguments. And hopefully we'll get everything covered in this video. So this is it. This is the Stella barrel system. Simon, take it away. Um, when I started looking at the Stella barrel system, I wanted to design the best barrel from the very beginning on every feature all the way through. It's been a long time since anyone actually put a lot of thought into the design of barrels and things like the Freak system have been around for um, nearly 14 years since that was patented. The Stella barrel system actually from the very beginning of how the ball enters the bore with the way we have the radius into the chamfer makes it very gentle on paint. We then have the quick thread design, which means when you put it into something like the axe, it only takes one and a half turns to screw in. You go and put a cocker threaded barrel into a, a normal cocker threaded gun, it takes forever. Now it's just one and a half turns. The back is designed to be um, gripped with the facet so you can get it on and off your gun easily. It also has through holes so that if it gets stuck on a gun or on a pump gun, you can put a key through it, twist it and get it off like that. So there's a lot of little hidden features into this. There's a thought been applied the whole way through the barrel for different reasons and for different functionality and for performance. So we're starting with the back. Yeah, the back is uh, eight inches of control bore with a, a first gas release at seven and a half inches. The reason why we have eight inches, I've done a huge amount of testing with the ballistics chronograph, looking at the velocity that the paintballs are shot from your paintball gun. And I found that whether it's a spool valve gun, whether it was a poppet gun or an ax or any other different type of gun, that the majority of them, the smallest standard deviation in velocity was when the control bore for the back of the barrel was between seven and a half and eight inches. Now that means there's a minimum fluctuation in the velocity that your gun shots from, shoots from one shot to the next. By having a smaller deviation, it means you can run closer to the velocity limit and running closer to the velocity limit gives you extra range, greater accuracy when you're out there playing paintball. So how does it deviate? Is it, is it, you know, is it broad, is it minimal as you get longer and shorter? You'll find that you can get good um, um, standard deviation as you get to a shorter back but you start losing efficiency the gun becomes very loud as you go to a longer control ball then you start losing the consistency so your standard deviation is, is greater now for those who are not familiar with barrel systems and guns all together explain efficiency efficiency is the number of shots that you're going to get out of your um, tank on your gun when you're out there playing um, and the barrel can make a significant difference to that the most important thing is the velocity that you're shooting at five or six feet per second makes a phenomenal difference to your efficiency um, because it's actually the square of the velocity, which is how you calculate the energy in the projectile. Um, so that's the most important thing. The weight of the projectile is very important. And then how the gun actually uses the gas and how efficiently the barrel uses the gas. One of the things that we have with the front bores of the barrel is you can actually size these down. And we found that um, even with all the porting, you still get a small amount of acceleration in the front of the barrel. So you get a slight velocity difference, 10, 15 feet per second between having the front on or not having it on. And that will actually give you, again, more efficiency so you can uh, get more shots out of your tank. Now we've got a, an 8 inch in the back. How long is, are all your standard fronts? Um, the front, actually, when you put these two pieces together, creates an overall barrel which is 14 inches. So you have 8 inches on the back and you have 6 inches of control ball that are actually functioning in the front of the barrel. And then you have the section that is actually uh, overlapping. Now I just have the short front end, but you have mm -hmm. multiple front ends. What, tell me, tell, us, tell everyone about these. These uh, fronts, with the cosmetic 14 inch tips, they're designed to fit on the barrel and screw over backwards. And they're really just cosmetic. When you get to a 16 inch or an 18 inch tip, they screw on the front and they're still a functional barrel. They actually have a 0 0.70 internal bore, which is similar to most two piece barrel designs. So it still functions as part of the barrel. And in some guns, the actual 16 and 18 inch tip can even make the gun quieter. With the fronts, we actually have them sized, which helps with the uh, efficiency. You slow down the gas release as it comes around the ball. Now, the biggest contributor to the sound of your gun when it's firing is actually the sound of the gas being released. It's like creating a mini sonic boom. Anything you can do to slow down the gas uh, makes it quieter. So by having a tighter bore fit in the front of the barrel, you actually slow down the gas as it can escape around the ball, so it becomes quieter. By having a lot of very small porting, the gas is slowed down, so it becomes quieter. We did a lot of specific things with this barrel design to make it as quiet as possible. As I get older and slower, I like being sneakier. So I find that um, 
a, a quiet barrel is a, an effective uh, competitive aid for yes, me. Yes, I like not giving away my position after I take that one shot. Um, Absolutely, and it doesn't matter whether you're playing um, recreational paintball or you're playing on a speedball field. Right. A lot of how you uh, locate your opponents is the sound of them firing their guns. Right. So what I did was try to make it as quiet as possible. The actual sound, because of the way we did the porting and the smaller bore, um, is a, a longer, more uh, drawn out sound. So it uh, sounds perceptively much quieter than the shorter, sharper sound. And having a longer control back, the smaller diameter front, and the uh, lots and lots of very small porting all helps make it quieter. Now, why is this in uh, metal and not some carbon fiber? Um, we do actually offer a carbon fiber front in conjunction with Deadly Wind. Uh, very good friends of mine, they make the best carbon fiber pieces in the industry. So I work with them and we do provide a carbon fiber front. Um, that is available in custom lengths. They'll actually make you one whatever length you like. We just have one made for a customer that only had a half an inch of carbon fiber exposed at the front. And he'll do crazy lengths as well. So guys, um, you want to hit Inception Designs and send, send them an email. They are accessible. Yeah, we, we try to answer all of our stuff on Facebook and on the social media and on the Inception forums where we have our own dedicated forums. Um, the reason why I do aluminium is manufacturing a carbon front and making a lot of small porting like this to make it quiet is very, very expensive. The carbon fronts are more, typically more expensive than the aluminium. We find that we're able to get a very, very low sound signature and make it more cost effective by doing it in aluminium. But we do have the carbon fiber front available as an option as well. With these small small points, uh, the front ends, and you said the longer one, is that mm -hmm. going to affect the efficiency then as well then? Um, typically because you stepped it up, the efficiency by the time you get out of the 14 inch barrel, it's not going to make a difference to it because the ball isn't really, the, the gas is no longer expanding to accelerate the ball. So you're not going to get more efficiency from having a longer barrel. So you've done all the hard work back here? Yeah. We find that um, the people that like longer barrels are more for point of reference for aiming. It's great for people playing pump guns. I love shooting a 16 inch barrel on my pump guns or on my autocockers. Some of the guys with things like the military style guns with the shrouds, they like a longer barrel so it can stick out the end and they can still help uh, aim their shots well. We also have the, the threaded front because this is the most expensive part of the barrel system to make. And by having three, these available in three different bore sizes, it would be very difficult and very expensive for our customers to buy them in different lengths, try out different fittings, and have to buy this every time. By having this threaded and all the work done in this component, they can change the length of the barrel or the style of the barrel just by the threaded end piece, which is the cheapest piece in, in the whole system. They can even buy an apex adapter and put an apex barrel on the end of here if they no wish kidding. to. All right, so we're going to stop here, guys. We're going to do another video so that if you want to talk, you know, get into exactly how to pick your barrel system, Simon's going to cover that next. It's too much for any man!